So now this next page, it starts getting into transforming from words to algebraic expressions and equations and whatnot. So it starts to get a little bit more tricky here, uh, especially for some of these problems. But again, just be very careful and you'll be fine. So now the first part just wants you to translate each phrase into an algebraic expression and they want you to use x as the variable. So in this case, we have a number subtracted from 57. Now this one is very easy to make a mistake on. You see the subtraction that's indicated in the expression or in the, uh, the phrase, but a lot of people would just automatically say, okay, well, a number is x, subtracted is minus, 57 is 57. But that is not correct. So again, remember, subtracted from is one of those phrasings that actually reverses the two around. So this would not be correct. You'd want to rewrite it the other way, which is 57 minus x. So subtraction is only a one-way street. It's one way that's right. You can't reverse it, and it means the same thing. So, so be careful with subtraction. Addition, on the other hand, is a little different. Now we have some choices. So in this one, the sum of 15 and twice a number. So the sum we know is addition, but what are they adding? They're adding two things. So they're adding 15 and twice a number. So remember, twice a number is just 2x. So they want you to add those two things together. So you can write it one of two ways. You can say 15 plus 2x. Or if you're a nerd like me, you like the variables first. And you'd say 2x plus 15. Either way, though, would be acceptable. All right, so quick translating from phrases to expressions. Nice and quick. Now some actual application problems. So the sum of 4 times a number and 6 is negative 30. What is the number? So again, there's that sum. We know we're adding two things up. So what are we adding? We're adding 4 times a number and 6. And that has to equal 30, negative 30. So 4 times a number, so 4x, plus the number 6 equals the negative 30. So some of these are going to be that quick. You can just directly translate it from words into an equation. Now we just have to solve it. So we got to get x by itself, so we're going to lose the 6 first. Now be careful, negative 30 and negative 6 is negative 36. And so now we got to get rid of the 4 which we can do so by dividing. So x equals negative 9. So negative 9 would be the number. All right, very similar for the next one. When twice a number is subtracted from 10, the result is 4 plus the number. Find the number. Now, subtraction, red flag. Remember, red flag when it comes to subtraction. Make sure you know which direction you need to write it. Because it's subtracted from, we need to reverse it. So it's tempting to want to say 2x minus 10, but you got to flip it. So this is going to be 10 minus 2x equals 4 plus the number. Addition is commutative, so it doesn't matter which way we write the addition side, but we can write it as 4 plus x. So now we have our equation. Now we can start to solve it. Now, as far as what to move first, we, can ha we have a choice. We can move the minus 2x, we can move the x, we can move the 4, we can move the 10. Lots of choices. I like to move the smaller of the two x's. In this case, the minus 2x is smaller than a positive 1x. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So that gives me this. Now I can move the 4. And then I can divide. So 2 is our answer for that one. All right. So far, so good. 
Let's take a look at 18, and that will wrap up this page. Grace wrote a $600 check for her rent. She, then she deposited her $750 paycheck and a $75 tax refund into her account. The new balance was $309. How much was in her account before she wrote the rent check? So now they're getting a little bit more applied. But what are they looking for? They want how much money was in her account before she wrote the rent check. So that should be our variable. So the, this is going to be the money in the account before the rent. And so now, let's see what we got. So there's the money in her account before she, she wrote the rent check. Now what happened? She wrote a check for $600, so we're going to have to take that away from her account. And then we're going to have to deposit $750. So we want to add that in, and then we're going to add in the tax refund. And that should end up equaling her new balance, which is 309 so now we just have to do a little bit of adding. So let's get our calculator out here. So we got a minus 600. So let's make it negative. Let's add the 750. Let's add the 75. So that gives her a positive $225. So when we combine all three of those, we end up with a positive $225. And so now we just got to move that 225 to the other side by subtracting it. And so let's see what we got. 309 minus 225 is 84. So we got $84 in her account before she wrote the rent check. Now, is that a good practice? <laughs> Probably not. Unless you know that paycheck's going in, I'd maybe wait until you have a little bit more money before you wrote a $600 check. But that's me. So, all right, so that wraps up this page. Got one more page left. See you in the next video.